News Talk 89 WLS. And we're back at 1125, and we're back with political shootout. Uh, just a note, if you want to talk about the results of the election, uh person to person with some of the people who participated in it, the City Club of Chicago on uh, Monday morning, the Monday morning forum, uh, which is going to be meeting at 12 South Michigan, the Chicago Athletic Club. We're going to have a number of people who participated in it, and you, for a price of a cup of coffee, um, you can uh, talk to them. I'll be the chairman of the event. Bob Malara will be there, a state senator who had a major responsibility over uh, Mr. Pushard's campaign. Kitty Kurth, who is a Democratic strategist, and a national strategist. John McGovern will be there, who is press secretary for Peter Fitzgerald. And Rich Giuliano, who was number two in the uh, George Ryan campaign with uh, supervising the work on the ground. Uh, let's go to the idea of the Secretary of State. Was it a surprise that El Salvi lost? I ask you, Bob Malaro. No, I think, uh, uh, as you saw from the concessions, uh, I mean, I should say the victory speech by Jesse White, uh, you know, I was amazed, and I guess El Salvi was too, at how popular and well-respected Jesse White really was. I mean, as far as Salvi's popularity, maybe, maybe Tom could speak to that, uh, Jimmy and Jim. Uh, Jimmy could speak to that as far as uh, what he thought in the party. I just thought it was surprised at the fact that the message of White Get Out, Jesse White, is a very well-respected, very well-liked man. Jim. Al Salvi took a beating because he turned his back on the gun people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the reason why he took a beating, and that's what George Ryan should pay attention to that. He's got to reach out to them these next four years because these people, I was at the Fitzgerald uh, victory party, and I talked to hundreds of people who were there who would vote for anybody but Al Salvi. And I, I, you know, I feel bad about that. I'm, I'm one of the Nixon believers who believe that you agree with him more than you disagree with him, that you should vote for him. But these people, I don't care if he was the only name on the ballot, they would not have voted for him. They're not going to vote for him, and they're mad at him. Okay, Peggy and Peoria, you're on with Tom Rose News Talk 89, WLS. Hi, Tommy. Hi, hi Peggy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> say hi, Bobby. Peggy, are going to say hi to me? <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. Right. Okay, where do we start? Um... Well, first of all, I like what you had to say in your newsletter about Al Salvi. And okay. He might be in line for governor, which it wouldn't be surprising, Secretary of State. See, the Secretary of State... No, what happened was in the newsletter I pointed out the establishment of the Republican Party was concerned about him running ultimately against Jim Ryan. Go ahead, my dear. And I agree with you. I, you know what? We agree a lot, Tommy. Uh-oh. That's dangerous. Not in matters of... Substance. I told you we were mushy, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but not in matters of substance. Right. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, Carol Mosley Braun, um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to speculate, I'd love to speculate about if Ryan is, as you might suggest, Tom, in your newsletter, a one-term candidate. I didn't say that. I, I said he's 64. If he is. If he is. Okay. Okay. I understand he's, he's 70, in his yeah. 70s. Or no, 70. no, he's 64. 64, but, okay. Yeah. At any rate. But I mean, if you're 64, I don't think you're going to, um, you know, break the records of being Illinois' most longstanding said. governor. And he could go two terms, but do you sure. think that there will ever be a female governor, and could Corinne would be that? Uh, Bob well, Malaro. You know, in this state, unfortunately, every time you have a vice president, they're, they're naturally considered uh, presidential material. For some reason, our lieutenant governor, it's not the stepping stone. The stepping stone happens to be the secretary of state's office. Uh, Corinne Wood is... You know, ran a nice campaign with George, but George was lieutenant governor. He had to give that up and become secretary of state so he could run for governor. So, it, you know, I think it hurts, Corey. I, I think that the first female governor, be, she has to be conservative, <laughs> and she will be. And I think that, I think that that's what all uh, conservatives don't mind voting for anybody who believes with them. And I believe that if you can get a, a conservative woman to run, she would win. And I think that George Ryan, he might... He's going to have trouble next time. I mean, just as long as he's going to be reaching out to some conservatives who he, whose feelings he hurt. Do you think next time, do you think, and I'm asking Peggy this too because I know she's a feminist, do you think next time, four years from now, Hillary Rodham Clinton may come back maybe as Hillary Rodham and decide that she's going to run for governor? I think that's almost impossible. First of all, after this last <coughs> year, I think she's had it up to her ears in elective office. She could do anything in an appointed capacity, and she wouldn't have to run for election. You know, I think I don't think she would possibly run for anything. She's a political animal, but as you know, Tom, it's a much easier job if you're appointed. Yeah, that's true. Okay, here we go. It is time now for the WLS News and Information Update. Here's Tom Buper. Tom, Discovery is back on Earth. There was an excellent landing in Florida. Heard live here on WLS, Jim Heath reports. 
What was described as a smooth landing despite marginal crosswinds, the space shuttle Discovery, with its crew of seven, including Senator John Glenn, touched down right on schedule at 12.04 Eastern Time at the Kennedy Space Center. The drag chute was not deployed. There will be a post-landing news conference in Houston by NASA officials at about 1.20 this afternoon to discuss the completed mission with the media. All is well with the crew and Discovery after a very successful mission. Not a lot of support reported so far for outgoing Governor Edgar's idea to help out the Illinois horse racing industry. Edgar proposed a couple of days ago allowing a state-owned riverboat casino in Cook County using the profits to help horse racing. I'll be very frank, that is not a priority, is what Chicago Mayor Daly told the Sun-Times, and he questioned why the outgoing Edgar was making an issue during his last days in office. President of the thoroughbred industry of Illinois, James Cafagno, says, I don't think we can fix the industry in two weeks, maybe months. And Arlington owner Richard Kachosis says he's not interested in an expansion of gaming. WLS traffic. The bridge over the Eisenhower Expressway was up for a while. It's now back down, but inbound is still delayed back to the Dan Ryan. WLS Chicagoland weather. Increasing clouds, a high 42. Tonight, snow developing, a low 32. Inch or two accumulating before it ends tomorrow morning. This report brought to you by Jewel Food Stores. Thirst for value. Shop Jewel. Save on assorted Coca-Cola products. $3.99 a case with preferred card through Wednesday. Your next WLS. WLS News update at noon or when news happens. I'm Tom Bubert, News Talk 89, WLS. Enjoy serene country living nestled in a picturesque natural setting. Wiseman Hughes presents Savannah Heartland. Distinctive single-family homes in Aurora priced from the low 150000s Within Batavia School District 101 and just minutes from I-88, Savannah features abundant nature areas and a fishing pond, plus hiking and jogging trails which link to the Illinois Prairie Path. Your family will also enjoy the many activities sponsored by the Batavia Park District. Offering a wide range of homes in a variety of styles, Savannah is certain to have the home you're looking for. Designed to meet your family's needs and exceed your expectations. Wiseman Hughes provides site development by Bell Land Improvement, the finest in residential plumbing from A.W. Opal, and Reynolds Aluminum and Royal Vinyl Siding provided by Tempco Installations. Visit Savannah, single-family homes in Aurora priced from the 150s. For a free brochure, call Wiseman Hughes at 1-800-713-3636. That's 1-800-713-3636. Wiseman Hughes, home is where our heart is. An equal housing opportunity builder. And I'm in, and it's on. Yes, M. Hyman & Son is the premier big and tall men's specialty store. Since 1900, nobody can offer you more of the selection or better values than M. Hyman & Son. Especially now when you'll save an additional 20 to 50% off all executive suits, sport coats, luxurious leather coats, jackets, slacks, everything, including new arrivals, are 20 to 50% below M. Hyman & Son's regular prices. M. Hyman & Son, 8816 Gross Point in Skokie. Save 20 to 50% from famous designer names. Talia, Jane Barnes, Terza Umo, Ruben of Canada, Cutter Buck, plus special savings on formal wear at Emma Hyman & Son, 8816 Gross Point Road in Skokie. Open every day, including Sunday. Any questions, call 847-581-1800. 581-1800. M. Hyman & Son, the premier big and tall man's specialty store. M. Hyman & Son, the premier big and tall man's Hello, and welcome to America's favorite game show, Name That Excuse. All right, Bill and Celia. Hi. Let's see how many excuses you can think of for not receiving a page. Celia starts. Okay, my pager was turned off. I'm sorry, no. Huh? You get two more tries, Celia. Oh, um, I was out of range. Nope. Try again. Oh, uh, my battery was dead. Sorry, you're out. Uh... Bill, do you have the answer? Yes, I do. The answer is now there are no excuses for not getting a page. Absolutely correct, Bill! That's right. With Skyward Plus guaranteed messaging from Skytel, there are no excuses for missed messages. That's because it's the first nationwide paging service that stores your messages when you go out of range and automatically delivers them when you return to a coverage area. And Skyward Plus lets you receive email messages on your pager, corrects garbled messages, and provides a toll-free access number. So get Skyward Plus and get the message. Guaranteed. Just call 1-800-SKY-4541. That's 1-800-SKY-4541. Chicago's only News Talk Radio. News Talk 89 WLS. Okay, we're back, and it's 1135. Political shootout with me, State Senator Bob Malaro, and uh, also Jim Leahy, a Republican. Bob Malaro, a Democrat. They were working in the campaigns, and they have views about the campaigns. Uh, uh, let's talk about the uh, a Republican, Judy Bartopinka, re-elected in a squeaker 
over Democrat Orlin Park Mayor Dan McLaughlin. I was surprised at that. What's your analysis, Jim Leahy? I think that McLaughlin's a is a is a heck of a name for for elections in Illinois. And I is think that all it is. No, I think uh, they had a big turnout in the city. I mean, that's you know, it was a big turnout in the city and it made it closer. But you know, like they say, you know, an inch is as good as a mile in this business. And she won. And you know, well, in Illinois, there are more people call themselves Democrats than Republicans. The non-high profile races such as Comptroller, Treasurer, we should do very well as Democrats there. I think it's more that uh, the name Judy Bartopinka, she has name and recognition one way or the other, and I think it ultimately was her name recognition that brought her to the victory. So, in other words, that wasn't a disadvantage. No, not, not as was, far as I'm concerned. Her name recognition did it, and it was a good job by her because the Democrats should have won that office. We should have the treasurer's well, office. Well, she had now. some labor support as well, too, so I know that there was a lot of, a couple of unions I know of were out working for a couple of locals. Well, now, a heartbreaker for me, uh, Democrat Dan Hines elected over Republican Chris Lawson. I like Chris Lawson I love, and yeah. uh, CPA and the whole thing. Friend of labor. How do you analyze that, Bob Malaro? Oh, well, I, I just think that... Uh, Tommy Hines uh, is... Yeah, poor, well, Tom Hines, obviously, we, we got terrific name recognition. Everybody wanted to be with Tom's son. But the other thing was that I think Chris Lawson made a mistake. I sit with him in the Senate. Very serious-minded, intelligent man. The only problem was... He trivialized the race with that silly commercial. Mm -hmm. He turned it into a silly race. Instead of being serious, just like he is serious, he trivialized it. And people think, well, wait a minute, if he's going to make a joke out of this, I'm not going to vote for a jokester. Jim Leahy. I, I think his problem was is that the commercial would have worked, but it should not have been in September. <laughs> I didn't hear a thing from him in the last month, and I feel bad for him. We worked for him. He was the one who saved our. He was the one who saved our jobs at McCormick. You say Place. we? You mean union guys? Uh, our our locals worked for him. The riggers and the decorators. I know the uh, the we worked for him because he was the one on the way down to the elevator. He changed his he changed his vote and saved our jobs by the one vote. Uh, there was a couple of them who did, but I mean he did. Okay, let's look at this. Democratic House Speaker Mike Madigan retains control of the House. Adds two votes to his current 60 to 58 edge, Bob Malaro. Well, to the person a couple weeks ago says that I'm a Madigan stooge, I, I, l let me not disappoint him. <laughs> uh, you know, I got to just say this, the, the speaker's a, you know, a genius. I mean, here the Republicans cut the map, they make it, they take 18 days, get in a room to make it to their advantage, and Madigan keeps beating them. I mean, it's it, it absolutely amazing, which comes to another subject, and I don't want to... I want to get, before you get to... About the, punching, about the punch 10 yeah, and punch I'm gonna 8. I'm going to ask you that, so, but but before you get into that, let's have Jimmy Leahy tell us why Madigan added to his power. You know what I found out in this election? There's something I didn't know. Where I live up on the, on the north part of, the, of Illinois here, and they call it the North Shore, and you know, a lot of those areas, are the, I found out that the reason why we don't do as well as we think we're going to do up there is because a lot of the men don't vote. A lot of the men take the train in the morning, take the train at night, and they don't vote. Mm -hmm. And what we need up there is organization. So I hope somebody from Lake County Republicans are listening. What we need is more absentee ballots to get out. We need people to get out there and to work on these people to vote. That's an interesting thing. At the same time, Republican Senate President James Pate Phillip adds to his current number. Uh, and uh, Well, you know, I, I don't want to give you the technical answer because it's a little boring. But unfortunately, when you cut a Senate district, which is two state rep districts combined, and for those who don't know, and you make it 60-40 Republican, the state rep district may only be 52-48 Democratic, but the other part of the district where Mike doesn't go after Madigan is, is like, you know, 70-30. So it's very hard to pick those state Senate seats off. One thing about Madigan as Speaker that maybe Gingrich should have took a page out of his book is, you know, he's not a publicity hound. You know, you live by that sword, you die by, and that's what cost Newt. He just quietly goes about organizing, 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 Can't and that's... Him. That's that's a smart thing. To I, do. I I cannot I, I can agree more I can agree more. I think that you know for years and years you never knew most people did not know who the speaker of the house was in the in the in the government outside of Tip O'Neill. Yeah. Well, Tip O'Neill and then Carl Tip O'Neill started getting a little bit of trouble when he started beating up on Reagan, that's and right. then he pulled back into the shadows. That's right. This is the way the Democrats have run it forever. You you just don't... speaker should not be appointment. No, but he, he should would, be the guy presiding. But he would have never. The Republicans would have never taken over if Newt wasn't the way Newt was. So it, he was perfect for what he did. And I'll tell you what his next job should be is uh, the head of the RNC. Boy, Jim that'll Nicholson kill should everybody. Yeah. Well, not him... only kill House people, we'll end up Good with luck. everybody. I hope, I hope he does get it. Why would it? No, the guy is a, bu a brilliant strategist. Well, he's a brilliant strategist. And he's the biggest money maker the Republicans have. Okay, let's talk about straight ticket voting. The trip's Bruce Dole says that the voting uh, hurt the Republicans as well as Democrats. Did it? Bobby Malone. Yeah, I think so. I think that was a knee-jerk reaction. When the Republicans control both uh, the House and the Senate for that two-year period and the governor, they tried to do everything they could to... Uh, 
get anything they wanted. He just did a big, big power grab, and this was something that was a knee-jerk reaction. I'm sure they're sorry they did. It definitely hurt them in the two seats that Mike Madigan picked up. If there was no question, if there was a punch eight there, that he would not have won that seat. He won by 140 I votes. Was, I think they're smart to do it, but go ahead, Jim Leahy. I think, uh, I, I think it really doesn't matter. Like I said, the reason why... That they, they, they seem to vote a little bit more Democratic up on the North Shore when it's supposed to be a Republican thing is because, and I, I'm still surprised about this, and I'm going to push this till the Republicans figure this out, is that we've got to get out there, and a lot of these, a lot of the husbands do not vote. A lot of the women vote. And, you know, women are more, are, are a little bit more liberal than the men yeah. up there. And uh, if we don't pay attention and we don't go for these votes, we deserve to lose, lose well, these seats. Let me why... Well, let me tell you why I think that uh, the removal of Punch 10 was the best thing for Republicans. I think with Punch 10, as you look the the southern tier of counties, uh, Pochard is running well ahead of Carol Mosey Braun. If you'd had that, they would have had a largely, she would have gained as a result. You would probably have Judy Carol Judy Bartopica would have won. Yeah. I mean, there's, there was a big turnout in the city, and, that, yeah. and that's why Dick Devine was in there. So if we lose, if this maybe affected two House seats, this really affects more than that over the long term, I think, Senator. I know you don't agree, but... Okay, let's take some calls. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Evergreen Park. Jerry, you're on with Tom Roser, News Talk 89, WLS. Tom, it goes along with the lines uh, that you were just talking about. I have a question about the uh, could the Republicans recruit either you know minority or his more his minority or you know African American or Hispanic uh, candidates. I mean, because I mean they're for who for what? Well, for any office because they they're well that's an age old problem. We've never been able to find good candidates in the African American I, community. I they're like they're rubber stamps for the Democrats. It does. I don't yeah. think it matters one bit. I really don't think it matters. Look at Leroy Martin. I mean, there wasn't a straight punch ticket, and he was he was beat up by... They voted 98% Democratic. Just, a guy called up in the early part of the show, and I think it's very right, when we were talking about the speakership, and somebody mentioned J.C. Watts, and he's, he said, he's not for he the, said um, uh, don't fool yourself that uh, African Americans are not going to be inveigled by a black face and leadership. That's not going to do a whole lot. It's a matter of ideology and a matter of philosophy. What do you think of that, Bob Malaro? Well, I, you know, I, I think that happens to be true. As far as, as, far as good candidates out there, and I think uh, Tom would agree with this, there are certainly terrific candidates out there in the African-American community, Hispanic community. The, the problem that you have, though, is, that is where they grew up and their, their whole history and tradition, as well as, uh, you know, <laughs> being from the city that I am. We, we tend to grow up Democratic, and those, those traditions uh, die hard, and then we tend to stay in the Democratic Party. I grew out of it. Thank you very much. New Lennox, Jim, you're on with Tom Roser, News Talk 89, WLS. Hi, I'd like to talk about how the religious right has been blamed for, uh, for the voter turnout. Okay. Um, I would like to talk about it. I'd like to give you an analogy about this. Yes. Let's may say I walk into a store. I need a new toaster or something. The salesman shows me everything that the store has to offer, but... Uh, you know, nothing really impresses me. So I walk out. There's no sale. Yeah. Now, whose fault is it that no product was sold? Maybe it was the salesman's fault. Maybe the line of products was just not impressive. I don't but quite know how that fault? pertains to what we're talking about we're, here. Well, I, the religious right is being blamed for the low voter, voter turnout. But, and, and uh, you know, Republicans just did not support the social conservatives. They ran a bunch of country you, clubbers, and we weren't impressed. You, you are correct. I believe, I believe that. You know, the, the media is trying to push, trying to say that we were too rigid. Let me tell you something. The only one who beat the Democratic incumbent was the conservative. Uh, the Fong in California, he went wishy-washy on us, started doing this human rights thing. He lost his base. Here we go. Charlotte, Buffalo Grove. You're on with Tom Rosen, who's Talk 89 WLS. Uh, just a comment on the Secretary of State. Yeah. Race. I know Jesse White has spent his life really helping young people, but I'm a little unsure about moral issues. I'm reading, looking at some family voter guides, and there's no responses uh, or either opposition to certain moral issues. For instance, outlawing late-term abortions or requiring parental consent for a minor girl or child yeah. in abortion to uh, have a stricter obscenity standard. So what's your point? Uh, I know he's a good person, but I wish he would clarify his uh, stand on, for instance, the uh, library computers. I understand he, he opposes... Well, I don't know. We'll have to ask him. I think on the campaign he had a position that said that he opposed any restriction on free speech in libraries. Is that well, right? that's, that's what he said. We'll have to take a look at what he does. And, and that, what you just hit on at the end was, was certainly an issue that uh, 
I think is fair. Some of the other issues, and this is an age-old problem, do you vote for the candidate that you like their votes or their stance, or do you look at their character? And i got to be honest with you, when you, you have someone who runs for Secretary of State, you know, you ask him about certain positions that the Secretary of State cannot, and it's not a matter of, of won't, he just cannot, or she, right. cannot get into these issues. They don't vote for them. They're not legislators. Okay. So for him to answer those questions doesn't seem to be apropos. You know, there's, there's nothing, uh, you know, the, I have nothing against Jesse White. I think he's, but I think he was beat because there was an anti salvi vote. And these, the people who, are, the NRA people who, who backed him, and he turned their, his back on him, they would... You're talking about Salvi now. Yeah, and uh, Salvi, so he was, I think Jesse White was what the beneficiary you, well, of that. Uh, however, there's no doubt that the Republican estate establishment uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, deck him a little bit, isn't there? I mean... I don't think that the Republican establishment really matters. They didn't want Peter Fitzgerald either, but look who's at the top of the ticket. I mean... Okay. Victoria in Mundelein. You're on with Tom Roser, News Talk 89, WLS. Hi there. Talking Hi. about Fitzgerald and Salvi. You know, take a look at the numbers here. How much money did Fitzgerald spend on this campaign? And take a look at his issues. I don't believe he had a chance of winning unless someone had gone right before him to bring these issues to light and to be the proverbial whipping boy. I think that's right. In I other words, it's the story of Goldwater running in 64, paving the way, getting clobbered, paving the way for right. Republican victories. I, exactly. I think yeah. Salvi's problem, the whole problem, and the reason why he lost to... Uh, to, to um, Durbin was that he didn't, at the end of the campaign when he was getting beat up, he did not stand up for himself and people take that personally. The people who went out on a, li on a limb for him, the people who went out for him and put signs in their yard and knocked on doors and when he didn't stand up for his basic uh, base voters at the end, these people got angry and they're angry today and uh, you know I, I think, Victoria, you, you put it well. That's a point that you made that I never thought of, and I think, I think it, it, it bears. It's a very good point. The only thing I think that fits one better is that it or won the race is because Carroll had some problems that Durbin didn't. Right, I agree with that. And that no doubt about know, it. That <laughs> certainly has, has a lot to do with it, but without a doubt, a conservative, especially of, of this magnitude, let's, you know, his issues are hot issues. These are issues that most people don't even want to and, touch. And Fitz learned from some of Salvi's mistakes, and That's he did not make the same ones. Wait, I, you think you're right, Victoria. Good point. Right. Victoria, conservatives vote. We, uh, being a conservative, we know that. Uh, you know, I don't think it would be any different. I don't. I. I think that Fitz, if Fitzgerald ran against Durbin at the time, as long as he would have stuck to his issues, and I mean, when people see that somebody, whether you agree with them or not, if you stand up for what you believe in, people respect that. Well, let Towards me the ask, end, you know. Let me ask you a question about uh, Jim Edgar. He floats a new riverboat proposal, a new riverboat, possibly in Cook County, that would send some revenues to the horse racing industry, hoping that such a proposal would figure in reopening Arlington Park. Is that going to come before you as a state senator? I ask you, Bob Malaro. Yeah, I don't think it'll ever get there. Having better Bob or two, I'd love to see Arlington <laughs> Park reopen. It's a great, beautiful track, one of the best in the nation. However, the problem is J Jim Edgar would, would love to leave. Actually, his biggest issue now is keeping Arlington open. He's a horse racing fan. His father-in-law owns horses. I just don't think it's going to fly. He tried to do this for two or three years. He couldn't do it. I, I just don't see... The, he's got to make a better argument saying that if we own the boat, which isn't that bad of an idea, that the proceeds should go to horse racing. He's got to make a better argument as why it should go for the failing industry of horse racing as opposed to other failing industries. Jim Leahy. I don't think the government should be involved in anything like that. I don't believe the government should own a boat. I don't believe that they should go against people who are in private industry. I just, I, I think it's a terrible idea, and I think that, I, you know... I think that there should be racing out there, but, I mean, if they're not there, the land's worth a lot of money. Build some houses on it. Bobby Rush says that he will jump into the mayor's race in 1999. He says Daly didn't deliver for Mosley Braun, saying she did carry the 41st, 45, 23, and the 45th home ward of Cook County Chairman, Democratic Chairman Tom Lyons, adding that Puchinski carried 23, 38, and 45 against Stroger. Well, how serious is that allegation? And first of it's, all, is he going to run? And well, first of all, he's obviously going to run. Second of all, he was co-opted by the uh, uh, the mayor's great political strategy. I mean, the mayor worked very hard for Carol Mosley Brown, very hard for Jesse White, and very hard for Stroger. You're going to have Stroger and Carol Mosley Brown right there with the mayor returning the favor. Three wards out of the city of Chicago that have always been this way, that might have trouble carrying certain candidates. I, I just think that it's, it, it has nothing to do with the mayor, and for him to link it to the mayor makes absolutely no would sense. Would you expect that, uh, uh, but this would be a race that would have serious consequences for Richard M. Daly, Bob Malaro? What race, the mayoral race? Yeah. What do you mean serious consequences? Well, I mean, is Bobby Rush a viable candidate? No, he's not. Okay. Jim? Uh, 
I'm not sure if Bobby Rush, if, if he can get, you know, if he can get some excitement in the in the. But I don't I don't see what they mean by he didn't bring out the vote. The vote in the city, uh, the, the turnout in the city was way higher than anybody expected it was going to be. And, and Tom, before Bobby Rush calls me at home tonight, it's not him. I don't know if there's anybody who's viable against Rich Daly. I no think offense, that, Bobby. I think that there, there'll be people who are viable. There are a lot of people who are mad at him on the southwest and northwest side. A lot of unions are mad at him, the fire union, the police union. And they'll be lining people. up to vote for him. So, you know, we keep well, hearing this all the time. They're mad, they're mad, they're mad, and he okay. carries wards... Uh, Twenty-two thousand to five hundred. They so said the please. same thing about Jane Byrne, and uh, and they said the same thing about Jane Byrne with Harold Washington. Here if we you go. Can get, if the, you get that neighborhood. The WLS Chicago Land Weather Forecast, and I found it goes today. Increasing cloudiness. See, I was right. High in the lower 40s tonight. Snow developing, mixed with rain this evening. I said that. And uh, tomorrow, wet snow ending in the morning with an inch or two of of uh, slushy accumulation. See, I knew it. At O'Hare, it's 37. Midway, 38. DuPage County, 35. Lakefront, 38. And gorgeous, bright, crisp Chicago, Illinois. At the Land's End Outlet, we're putting something on sale that everyone needs. Sleepwear. And with an additional 40% off the lowest ticketed price, it's the perfect time to get something for everyone on your holiday shopping list and for yourself. Especially when it adds up to such significant savings off our regular catalog prices on men's, women's, and kids' genuine first quality Land's End Overstock merchandise. Who wouldn't appreciate some cozy PJs, a warm robe, or a pair of shearling slippers? They're the gifts that everyone likes getting. Don't miss our sleepwear event from November 5th through the 11th at the Land's End Outlet, where it's real Land's End and an honest-to-goodness outlet. Visit Land's End in Chicagoland at Vernon Hills, in the Hawthorne Hills Fashion Square, in Niles at Harlem and Dempster, in Lombard behind the Yorktown Mall, and in Schaumburg across from the Woodfield Mall. The Land's End Outlet. It's real Land's End and an honest-to-goodness outlet. Have you heard how much life insurance premiums can vary these days? Why pay more than you need to? Call for a fast, free quote in minutes over the phone. Now, Matrix Direct Insurance Services presents life insurance policies from the highly rated Protective Life Insurance Company, serving families for over 90 years. And listen to Protective Life's affordable rates. For a 10-year, $100,000 policy, a 40-year-old man can pay as little as $12.42 a month. A 50-year-old man, as little as twenty fifty two a month. Why pay more for life insurance? Call and find out over the phone how much you can save on quality coverage from Protective Life. Call 1-888-461-SAVE. That's Matrix Direct toll free at 1-888-461-SAVE. Graded Premium Life GPO6. Premiums increase after 10-year term subject to application and underwriting. Available in most states. Every year when pipes go bad, when faucets drip, when toilets don't work, and water heaters stop heating. Every year when plumbing troubles strike, more than one and a half million people from coast to coast strike back. With Roto-Rooter, America's neighborhood plumber. Call Roto-Rooter, that's the name. And we go troubles. Roto-Rooter. It's that time of year. Golden leaves, roasted turkeys, sleepless nights. Yep, it's budget time. At Liberty Mutual, we know you're watching expenses, so we created a free guide on five ways to save on your commercial insurance. We've already saved customers over a billion dollars in medical costs alone. Call toll-free 1-877-4-LIBERTY and have a good night's sleep. Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping people live safer, more secure lives. Power. We all want more, so we must get rid of all the dirt in our lives with the Shark Twin Energy Vacuum Cleaner. Two fans give it more suction than ordinary vacuums. That's more power. And Sharp's motor protection system prevents damage, giving us power for years. So seize the moment and get a Sharp vacuum and take control of the dirt in your life. Call 1-800-23-SHARP for an independent dealer near you or go to your local Circuit City and experience the power. Melrose Lincoln Mercury, the fastest growing Lincoln Mercury dealer in Chicagoland, has a huge selection of 98 Mountaineers and Mystiques in stock, just west of Maywood Park on North Avenue in Melrose Park. You may not agree with everything we say. You may not appreciate our parodies and satire. But we will make you think. Chicago's News Talk 89 WLS. 1155, this political shootout. Jim Leahy, Republican strategist, ex-Marine and union member.